to see the look in the eyes of someone whose life you are taking is so intoxicating. I am a killer, and I suppose you could say it started at a young age. What you are about to read isn't going to be a let's blame the childhood type of confession. No. I believe something in me was triggered by my childhood, and it manifested itself into something I really, really like about myself today. I am a killer. I won't be stopped. Be afraid. The story of my life began in 1978. I was born premature, thanks to all the coke Mom snorted when she had me. Doctors didn't think I would live past two, but here I am. I was born to an abusive, alcoholic father and a non-existent, cocaine-addicted mother. It seems my life was behind the eight ball from the get-go. I have an older brother and sister, but I don't remember them. Social services came and took them out when I was about four, and they were placed with different foster families. Me? I had no such luck. Because Mom and Dad managed to screw me over by feeding me what they could, so DSS wouldn't take me. As you can imagine, I didn't have the best home life. Dad eventually drank himself to death, and Mom kept snorting cocaine. When she was home, I can't ever remember her not high. She slept and slept, and didn't even go to claim Dad's body from the morgue. Cook County buried him in a cheap casket in what amounted to a pauper's funeral. So most of the time, it was me against the world. I would break into neighbors' houses to steal stuff, and sold them on the street for food, mostly jars of peanut butter and a few loaves of bread. Yeah, you could say I was desperate. So what? I had to eat. By the time I was in the eighth grade, I was skinny. This was about the time that DSS in Chicago kind of forgets about the kids. Teachers didn't care, or didn't notice. Honestly, if things kept going like they did, I was on the verge of starving to death. I skipped school on a Friday in order to break into a house in the neighborhood so I could get some stuff to sell to buy me food for the weekend. There was a house two blocks over that was on my target list. I didn't see the man's car, so I figured he was out. When I broke in, I saw an old-school police-type revolver on the guy's nightstand. My eyes lit up. I could sell that for a cool $200 or so. Everyone wants a gun in Chicago, right? But before I could make good on it, the man came bursting into the room and caught me. I resigned myself to my fate. Hell, if I was going to jail, I would get three square a day, right? I figured on him calling the cops, but he listened to my story, and after taking his gun back, he called for pizza for the both of us. He broke out pop and chips, and that was the first time in a long time I felt fool. I ate so much I nearly vomited. He said he didn't want me stealing in order to eat, and he would feed me every Friday after I got home from school, but I had to keep my grades up. Like a stray dog, I kept coming back for more and more. I made sure to keep good grades and to show him my report cards. Free food for maintaining good grades? Things were going great until, well, after two months, the man wanted something more. <laughs>